and welcome to Milkshake Monday. This is a ministry of Resurrection Baptist Church. My husband is Pastor William Helm and I'm Anita. Tonight I have the awesome responsibility to talk about hope through suffering. And I can tell you that it's not been an easy teaching. I have been very concerned and asking the Lord to give me the words of his scripture to be meaningful and touch hearts because when anyone is suffering, sometimes we as believers throw out these scriptures or say things and we think we're doing our best to comfort and encourage, but sometimes it lands flat because people just don't have the understanding that we truly care. And so it's my prayer tonight that the Holy Spirit anoints the teaching and the words of God that are going to be spoken to encourage all the people who may listen. I don't know who knows Christ or those who are searching or those who are in such despair and they are overwhelmed and uh, I've been there. So I, I totally understand how it can be and I want to share words of encouragement and hope through the Gospels tonight that will help someone know that they're not alone and that they're loved and that Christ is there. One thing that happened uh, not too long before I started to get my final notes together is I heard this commercial. And the commercial says, we're all going through this crisis. And as I was going upstairs, I said, well, we're all going through this crisis, but we're all having different experiences because of this crisis. If I were a person that had a job, I'm not going through this crisis the same as somebody who's underemployed, unemployed, have no prospects of being employed and have to pay bills and, and are waiting for somebody to call or send letters or harass me to say, where's my money for this bill and that bill, this rent, that mortgage, all these things are in my mind and I'm fretting about it. I'm concerned about food to, to be on the table. I don't even have money potentially to get into a car to drive to be in line for two and three hours away for a food line. There are things that all of us are encountering through this crisis that are different depending on what circumstances we have. So sometimes we can't relate. We think we can relate. We say, oh, I know what you're going through. That's not true. Some of us who haven't had loved ones that have actually died because of COVID or died during this period where you can't even bury your loved ones and you're, you're faced with having to have graveside burials with 10 people or less and the families four or 500 people, you can't relate. I just heard this past weekend of a woman whose son drowned. You know, we're reopening stores and the children are going out to have fun. And in a midst where you think you can kind of let down because of COVID, it wasn't any expectation that this mother would lose her child at 16. So my heart breaks for those things. But you have to find out as a Christian, what do you say as a message of hope and encouragement that won't fall flat, that won't appear as though you're just phoning it in. You're not even being sincere in what you're talking about. So as I started thinking those things, and thinking how people may see a stranger me on the Facebook or wherever they see this message, I wanted to say, I may not be in your shoes, but I have had circumstances in my life, experience where I've lost people I love. I felt upside down in, in some gray zone because of the grief it left. I felt like an orphan. I've been in situations where I've had to stretch $40 as a single mother to try to get to the next paycheck, but try to have enough food for breakfast and lunch and have enough gas to get to the, the work so I can get the paycheck. I've had situations of foreclosure, eviction, repossession. There are things that I've, I've struggled with in my life for my finances that it's just overwhelming. Now the thing about being in COVID, it just compounds it all. But tonight, the Spirit of God has encouraged me to share a, a, a message of hope. And the hope is in Christ, but I don't just want to say that. I want to share 
some truth so that you have some understanding that you're not by yourself and you can get through this. And you can get through this with the hope and knowing that Christ is right there with you. And I know that when I've gone through some of the hardest times of my life, fearful times, times where I, I, I may cry during this teaching because I am reminded of being with an addicted person in my life and everything I had was stolen or taken. And here I got to take care of a baby. I've been through situations in my life. You know, people see you where you are now, but they don't know where you've been. They don't understand some of the bridges you've come through through Christ. And they just see now. But you got to understand, the Lord is always with you. And there's a scripture that I wanted to say to y'all as I start out. I want to take y'all to John 14, 18. And it says, no, I will not abandon you or leave you as orphans in the storm. I will come to you. There are some major storms going on now. We think we're, we're going through this time where we're opening up and things are better, but we don't know what's around the corner with this COVID situation. We see marches on the street about people being just killed so senselessly. We see lives destroyed. I mean, they just had another example of a boy that a man, excuse me, a man that wasn't even doing anything. And they shot him dead. And you just see these stories. And sometimes you just have to turn the TV off or go to your little fishing pond, whatever that may be, just to kind of take a break and say, Lord, let me refocus and focus on the peace of God. Because if you look at all the things around you constantly, it will take you down. It will bring you down. That's why God said, lift up your head. Look to the things above. Set your mind on the things above in heaven. So that's why we're going to do some some deep diving into the scriptures tonight so we can have some hope. The first scripture I wanted us to go to after we just read of John 14, 18, we're going to go to Isaiah 42. And we're going to start from the source of our hope, which is Jesus Christ. And I want you to hear what the Father says about his son, that when you are going through some things, some storms in your life, and you need some hope, and that's why I use that door about opening the door, because when you are so overwhelmed and you're struggling, you're struggling through some, some serious things in this, in this journey, you will really find that you want to give up. You want to put your head down. You want to close yourself under the covers. You just don't want to talk to anybody. You just want to just, just leave me alone. But that's the time you have to go to the scriptures and hear the truth of the word of God when Satan is trying to take you down and take you out and make you give up on this life. Isaiah 42 in the Living Translation says, See my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. I have put my spirit upon him. He will reveal justice to the nation, nations of the world. He will be gentle. He will not shout nor quarrel in the streets. He will not break the bruised reed nor quench the dimly burning flame. He will encourage the faint hearted, those tempted to despair. He will see full justice given to all who have been wronged. He won't be satisfied until truth and righteousness prevail throughout the earth, nor until even distant lands beyond the seas have put their trust in him. The Lord God who created the heavens and stretched out them out, who created the earth and everything in it, who gives life and breath and spirit to everyone in all the world. He is the one who says to his servant, the Messiah, I, the Lord, have called you to demonstrate my righteousness. I will guard and support you, for I have given you to my people as the personal confirmation of my covenant with them. You shall be, you shall also be a light to guide the nations unto me. You will open the eyes of the blind and release those who sit in prison, darkness and despair. I am the Lord. That is my name. And I will not give my glory to anyone else. I will not share my praise with carved idols. Everything I prophesy 
came true. And now I will prophesy again. I will tell you the future before it happens. This passage in Isaiah 42 can talk to you about what's going on in all the nations of the globe with sicknesses and disease. It can talk to you about how you can be in despair by what you see with all of these people, Breonna Taylor or, or George Floyd, or all of these people that you see senselessly murdered because of what we look like on the outside. All these things that are going on, people hungry and we throwing away potatoes and milk. People going through so many struggles of depression, domestic violence, all kinds of sin in this world. But the Lord says he's there to encourage us. So I wanted to start out there so we can know, why do we hope? How can we hope? What is hope? All of those questions we have. But the thing about it is, you have to know who is hope. What are you hoping in? And all of it follows the path to Jesus Christ. It's not about Fantasy Island. This is a relationship. And I can tell you in the times that I've gone through some struggles and storms in my life, it wasn't because I was faking it and I'm, I'm playing games with church. It's because there was a deep yearning that I had to have somebody comfort me. Somebody tell me it's going to be all right. And you know why I always go, I, you, you find that when I teach, I'm always going to Psalm 139. And I'm going to tell you all why. Because in Psalm 39, when you're hurting, when you're afraid that you're all by yourself, that nobody's gone through what you're going through and you're full of pride, you don't want to tell nobody, and you just feel like you just lost, that, that there's so many bricks on your shoulders. And even though you hear the words of God where he says, my yoke is easy, my burden's light, it's not getting through to the, it's getting here, but it's not getting down to the heart. But then you go and start reading the scripture of Psalm 139. And when you think that God can't find you, that God doesn't understand, you start reading his word and you start saying it to yourself and a piece of hope just, just shines through the darkness. A piece of truth just penetrates through that despair, that faint heartedness, that I just don't know if I can make it one more day. I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. It just breaks through that truth of God's word and that love, hearing his word. And Psalms 139, I can't read it all, but I'm just going to show you a couple passages for why it gives you hope in the midst of your struggles, in the midst of your storms. In Psalm 139 verse 7 says, where can I go from your spirit? I can't go nowhere. There is nowhere that God can't be. He can be in a hospital room. He could be on the side of a grave site. He could be at your food line. He could be in your house where the fool is acting up and you're afraid for your life. He can be everywhere and anywhere. He can be with me. He can be with you. Where can you go? Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, and some people feel like they are living in hell right now. It's not hell. It's not the real deal hell. But there are some times where people are scared for their lives because they've got people in the house that they're scared of. They think they're going through hell because they can't feed their babies. They can't feed their family. They don't have a job. The mortgage is due. And they're three months behind. They don't see a they don't see no dollars coming in. And they don't have enough dollars to cover what they need and what's going to be for the future. So they feel like they're in hell. But it's not hell. But anything you're going through, God is there. It says, Behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. And here's the thing, this word I'm going to say right here, and your right hand shall hold me. We have taken this time of COVID where we can't even touch one another. Inside the house that you live in, maybe you got three or four people and maybe y'all are close and y'all embrace one another, but maybe you're living by yourself and you haven't been able to have somebody embrace you. Know that God our Father can stretch out his right hand and embrace you and hold you. And you say, Sister Helm, that's not the same. I have been in a situation. I was in college. I still remember this. And I was so going through something. 
and I felt lonely. I felt like, God, I need somebody to hold me. And I can tell you spiritually, I felt like the Lord embraced me. And I just felt the presence of the Lord to the point I felt that he was embracing me. He was holding me as, as much and as real as somebody embracing me. But you can know that God can hold you up. God can hold you and embrace you, even in the, in the midst of your sickness, in the midst of everything going on. You can have hope that he's got you. Well, let's go to another scripture. The scripture in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Now, Colossians talks about setting your mind. And, and a lot of times when you're going through some things, it's the mind battles. It's the battle of the mind because Satan knows if he can continue to have your mind focused on everything but Christ, everything but the word, he's going to get you to start going down, head down, emotions down, everything about you. You know, you're going to be thinking more about the doctor's results and, and all that he's done practiced on you and all he's done false prophesies over you. All of us, I tell my husband all the time, I said, you or me are not going out of here, not one day, one hour, one second before God knows that in thee. Doctors can say all they want to say about you or me, but the reality is God has the control of life and death. And we just need to make sure that when that time comes that he calls us home, we've done all we can in this natural body to share and proclaim his son, and the good news of Christ. And we're ready to go. But verse 1 and 2 says in Colossians chapter 3, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on the things of the earth. Now, you say that's easy for you to say, to him. you got a house, you got electricity. You got all this stuff. I said, you know what? A couple weeks ago, when Reverend Helm was sick and we didn't know what's going to happen with him, whether he's going to live or die, whether the doctors were going to be able to help him out or not. All the things that I could have been focused on was bad news, bad news, what if, what if. But I started thinking about you. I started thinking about heaven. I started thinking about, you know, what people fear the most is death. I said, but Reverend Helm, you and I don't have to fear death because we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The Lord and Savior that we have come to, to learn that he can be anywhere and everywhere. The Lord and Savior that holds us up, that gives us the peace in the midst of our storms. The Lord that says he's gone to prepare a place. This ain't just words. These aren't just this little Sunday school stories. We got to believe that stuff. And when you see the cares of this life, coming about you, beating you up every day, the fiery darts of the enemy coming against you every day. You have to have your mind game better because I tell you, if you stay in the natural plane all the time, everything you see, everything you hear, it's unraveling. They had that poll to say 80% of the people say that this country's out of control. Without Christ, everything is out of control. And there's a lot of people that don't think they need Christ. And they're out of control because they have all of this mess and they think that's important. All of this stuff down here. But that's this world. And this world has an end date. This world is temporary. This body is temporary. These troubles on this world right now are temporary. These struggles are temporary. It's the cares of this world, the cares of this life, not the eternal life. So that's why he says, Set your mind on things above and not on the things on the earth. That will give you some hope. When you start thinking about what God has in store for you, that's going to give you some hope. Now, I want to show you some of the things that God has in store for you. Because sometimes you get so weighed down, you forget. And you start to get all upset and you don't want to read the word of God. You don't want to go to the house of worship. You just don't want to do all this stuff because things are so bad. But they're, they're only bad for a temporary season. So let's go to Revelation 21, verse 4. We're going there because I want to show you some scriptures to hold on to. This is a temporary struggle and temporary storms. 
because God has got it all under control and he's, he is the victor. His salvation is the victory. His eternal salvation for all of us that embrace the gift of life, that's what we got to be hopeful for. If they take away the house, God will give you another house. We're a testament to that. If they take away the cars, we don't have plenty of cars that went back to the, the banker. But God got us another car. Our, our cousin came over and he said, Lord, y'all y'all actually like seem like a dealership because every few years you got another car. You know, whatever you think you've lost, God can replenish without any, any effort. Trust him. So verse four of chapter 21 of Revelation says, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain for the former things have passed away. In this earth, you got tears, you got sorrow, you got death, you got injustice, you got all kinds of problems or the cares of this world. And you can keep on focusing on them because you, you just say, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I can't handle it. Well, you can handle it, but God can. That's why Isaiah 42 said, the Lord, his chosen one, which is not our president, it is Jesus Christ. His, the fathers, the almighty God's chosen one. He is the victory. He is the hope. He is the grace. He's what we have to hold on to in the midst of the struggles. Because guess what, saints? These struggles aren't going to get easier. We are shut in but not shut out. But we have to start focusing our mind, to set our mind on things that are not coming in the mailbox, things that are not in the refrigerator, things that are not in the utility bills, things that are not what we see on CNN, NBC, Fox, and all that stuff. You have to set your minds on the things above. We're going to go to Romans chapter 8. I know it's a lot of scriptures, but when you are being bombarded with the cares of this world, it's too easy to become faint-hearted and troubled and have despair. You're looking at your, you, you can't walk, you can't see, you can't go, you don't have the right money, you don't have this, you go into the, I don't have, I don't have, I can't do, I can't do, and all of a sudden you, you, you upset. You, you're upside down with your emotions because it's all about the external stuff. But remember, the Lord doesn't look at the outward appearance. He doesn't look at the way you look old, broke, broke down. He doesn't look at that stuff. He says, are you going to trust me? Are you going to think about what I have going on in heaven for you? Are you thinking about testifying? Even in the midst of your storm, can you testify about the good news of Jesus? Lazarus was a poor beggar being licked on by dogs while he was right at the court of the rich man. But Lazarus ended up going up into Abraham's bosom while the rich man found himself in hell looking up at Lazarus. There are things that we're not going to change about our poverty, about our whatever circumstances of life, of our health. But guess what? You can trust God. Even in the midst of poverty, you can trust God. In the midst of sickness, you can trust God. In the midst of COVID, you can trust God. Chapter 8 of Romans. We're going to start at verse 24 to go through 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 24 says, For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. There are things that you're asking for that you think you need. You need better health. You need better money. You need better jobs. You need better this. You need better this. But the Lord knows, the Father knows what you have need of before you ask. And you're looking at the natural stuff. And God is thinking about the spiritual heart stuff. You can have all those things. You can have the house. I get you. I bet you 
Oprah and Jennifer Lopez and all these celebrities, Kardashians, all of them got all the natural treasures, right? They don't have no hope. They don't have no peace. Because if you don't find your salvation in Jesus Christ and reliance on Jesus Christ, those things don't matter. I'm not saying those people aren't saved. That's not what I'm saying. But you can have natural treasures and still not have peace, saints. And God knows what to pray for before we even ask. That's the Father. He knows. We're not orphans. We have a Father who is always around us, that's with us. We're not orphans. He's going to come to us. He's going to come to me. He's going to come to you. And he's going to be there. And you may not see everything that he sees, but that's why he says, set your mind on things above. Then you start to understand what love and kindness means, what grace and mercy means. You start to understand things. And so when Satan throws that unhappy pill at you, that nervous pill, that frantic pill, that panic pill, all them pills that make you think disaster, disaster, hurricanes of life situations coming at you. How are you going to cope? Pull hair out this way. Can't sleep. Can't, can't eat. Stick to the stomach. That's worry. And God says, be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplications, make your request known to the Lord. He already knows what you need before you ask, but you need to talk to him. Because the more you talk to him, the more that effective and fervent prayer and continual prayer, you stop crying so much. You stop having the parties of despair so much because you start to say, you know what? If the worst that can happen here is that I'm going up to be with the Savior, I ain't going to cry over that. I'm not going to cry. If the worst that, that this world can do to me is that I don't have some stuff and one day... My father's going to take me up to see Jesus and we're going to have a Hosanna time and praise God and praise the lamb. If that's the worst, then that's, that's great. I got something to set my mind on because I can be excited for that. Let's go to another scripture. We're going to go to, to Psalms 3. Psalms 3. I hope this is helping somebody. Psalms 3. Psalms 3, verse 2 through 6. Psalms 3, verse 2 through 6. It says, Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him and God. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and sleep and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of 10,000s of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. If you can truly believe that the Lord sustains you. He's not, you know, we say this scripture all the time when people are dying. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But somehow in the midst of our wanting something that we possibly just want. He didn't say need. If you need something, God said, I'll, I'll meet your needs. But there's a lot of times we want stuff. I don't want just one potato in the refrigerator. I need two bags, two 10-pound bags. I don't want just one loaf. I want three loaves. I don't want daily bread. I want two weeks worth of bread, Lord. And God said, I'm going to meet you. I'm going to take care of you. Remember the whole Lord's Prayer? Our daily bread. You got to trust him. For the daily bread. You got to trust him for every day. Because guess what? You you were worried about 10 days from now, but there's no guarantee that God's not going to call you home tonight. Tomorrow. You got to take care of today. Because like they said in the scripture, tomorrow has enough trouble. Today has enough trouble. You don't need to be focusing on tomorrow so much. You got to trust God for the now. Trust God for what can I do today to uplift your name? What can I do today to trust in all that you provided for me, Lord. 
and just understand the goodness of God. I know I've been going through a lot of scripture, but it's a point to it. Our last scripture we're going to go to is Psalm 147. Psalm 147. We're going to do verse 11. And it says, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his mercy. We know that God is a merciful God. We know that, right? He loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believes in him shall have life, have life. And shall not perish, but have life, right? So we can trust that we fear God and respect God and reverence God, but we have a hope in God because we know his mercy. We know how merciful and kind he is and that he's not going to ever leave us or forsake us. And like that scripture we learned in John 14, he's not going to abandon us. We are not abandoned orphans in the midst of this struggle and this storm. So I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, whatever you got going on, whatever it is, God got you. God has got you. God has got you in his right hand, holds you. He's right there with you. And you can, you can be assured that ain't nothing going to surprise God. And there's nobody with no more greater authority than our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's right there at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And those groans that the Spirit knows about all the stuff that you're going through and that you need, that you don't even know you need, but the Father knows you have need of it before you even ask. But guess what, saints? You got to ask. You got to take some time in prayer and talk to the Lord. Petition the Lord. Do y'all remember when Paul begged? He begged three times. Please remove this thorn from my, my flesh. It's bothering me. It's causing me. But the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for thee. I'm sure Paul didn't like that answer, but he understood. There's some things that God's going to let us go through. But he's saying his grace is sufficient. And he said, and those who hope in his mercy, hope in his mercy, trust in his son, trust in his salvation, trust in the spirit of God, who's going to be there right with you. He's there as a comforter and a helper to all of us. I thank you and Lord willing, I hope to see you next time.